So last class uh, we started with our uh, CTMC study and uh, we kind of uh, defined the notion that uh, the sojourn times that how much time my CTMC is going to stay in a state I will continue to stay in a state before it leaves it and uh, in the last class we showed that that has a exponentially distributed is exponentially distributed with the parameter ai that ai is uh, state specific the i whichever state you you started looking at and uh, the time after which it has left that state so basically it is we had this random variable So we said that yt is the time, remaining time after which you leave the current state, okay. And then we have said that, okay, suppose if I conditioned this random variable knowing that at time t, I am in that state i. So here in this definition, okay, what is that? So, here when I define this, this is not space state specific, I just looked at, okay, I start looking my CTMC at time t and just see what is the minimum time before it leaves my current state. And here suppose if I condition that, okay, when you start looking at your CTMC, you are in a particular state i and then how much, what is the probability that it is going to take at least u more units of time before you are going to leave. We had shown that this to be e to the power ai of u for some some ai which we say can be between 0 to infinity. Okay, let us say I have this random variable. So, yt is a random variable here, right. Suppose I condition this random variable like here, I xt i equals to 0 or let us say more generally instead of particular t I am going to look at time equals to 0. So, I am saying that at in the beginning at the 0th instant I am in state i and then I am looking at uh, at uh, 0th instant I am in state i and then I am looking at when is that I am going to leave my state how long I am going to stay. So, what is this y naught is going to give you? what in this case what will be the distribution of y naught? It is basically the first time you are going to leave out of state i right. So, you are saying I am going to start from state i y 0 is nothing but the minimum time when you are in a state which is different from i that is basically in a way it is going to say when is that your state is changing. In a way, this is same as like our random variable t1, right. So, you remember how you define t1? t1 is the instances at which the renewals were happening. Here, if you are going to interpret your renewals are when you are going to change your state, right, then t1 is the time here that is given by this random variable y of 0 condition that so, this is t1 is the basically the time that you are going to leave state i here because I have conditioned on i here. Okay, fine. So, now you see that the amount of time you are going to stay or the rate at which you are going to transit 
to other states is going to be governed by this parameter ai here right so based on that how this value of ai is then we can classify the states in my ctmc right so let us see this what are the possible things we can get. See like uh, the sequence of random variables sometimes I write it x of t like this sometimes I uh, simply write like subscript by t like we will we'll, um, assume that uh, both are indicating the same okay and uh, a state i is called So, I have classified them into two things. So, if it takes the value at the boundaries, either if it takes a value 0 or infinity, then we are going to either call them absorbing or instantaneous. Specifically, when it is going to take value a i equals to 0, we are going to call it absorbing, and when a i equals to infinity, we are going to call it instantaneous. So, let us see this. Suppose a i equals to 0, what is this telling? u a i equals to 0, it is basically telling you that anyway this probability. So, if a i equals to 0, whatever u you are going to take, this is going to be 0, right? One. Sorry, this is going to be 1. So, what however large u is, however large you are going to take, it is still going to be 1. That is probability that your y t is going to be larger than that quantity that is you continue to stay in that however large u it is going to be 1 then that makes sense like that is why you are going to call it absorbing that it is basically got stuck in that uh, whichever you started with that it is it is basically never living how far you are going to look it has been. And now suppose you put a i equals to infinity now. Now if put a i equals to infinity for whatever value of small u this guy is going to be 0, right. So, however small value of u are going to looking that, 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 uh, that your Marco che is going to stay uh, in that state is just 0. You put u arbitrarily close to 0. Once a i is infinity, this probability is going to be 0. That means, there is no way like my Marco chain is staying uh, in that continuing to stay in that change. It is just like as soon as it leaves, it is leaving that instantaneously. That is because however close u is close to 0, this probability is 0. That is the reason when a i equals to infinity, we are going to call it absorbing. Now, anything in between this sorry instantaneous we are going to call it instantaneous and anything in between this when a i is strictly away from infinity or like strictly finite and it is a non uh, zero quantity then we are going to call it as stable case ok. So, now see like uh, in, in our DTMC we had a classification of our uh, states into there also we had a transient recurrent right, the recurrent further null recurrent positive recurrent. There also we have the notion of absorbing state, but here we have another classification of states in when it comes to CTMC that is in terms of whether uh, how that parameter AI 
associated with state is going to be whether it's a zero infinity or something in between these two so we are going to call so basically now we are going to focus on a ctmc in which the states are slightly well behaved like uh, my ctmc is uh, is not like which is changing very very far like instantaneously right like uh, that means it's a kind of a highly unstable scenario right like every instance you are uh, ctmc is taking different states so i don't want to have such case so henceforth i am restricting to ctmcs in which such states does not arise So is this clear? We are just going to say that, like uh, my, my in a way, my CTMC is well behaved. Like it is not going to change uh, its state uh, at a very high rate. It will change its state, but at some uh, at some bounded rate. So, like in this case, when it is observing, once it hits the state i, it is not at all changing its state. Here, the rate of change is zero. But whereas in this case, it is still changing its state but at some bounded rate but we are in this case it is changing its states at a very unbounded rates if you put if you fit a particular states where a i equals to infinity so we are assuming that my ctmc does not have such a states okay okay next we are going to focus on So now we are going to study how does this CTMCs which are pure jump structure they are going to look like. What are the things I need to characterize them ok. Say like in, in DTMC we always looked my Markov chains uh, to a time index which was kind of discretized and uh, we know that ok at time at some discrete times we were looking at here that time itself is a random quantity so suppose in in a, in a discrete time markov chain you looked at at uh, t1 t2 let's say at periodic time not necessarily periodic but at at uh, some uh, discrete times but now when you are going to look at the ctmcs an event is happening at some times right and these times are random ok. So, the jump is happening at some time, next jump is happening another time. So, and you if you are going to focus on this con this events when the state is changing and uh, you are not interested something in between right as long as my CTMC continues to stay in a particular state fine. But when it changes that is the event of maybe of interest to you and that is happening at random times. So, often in this case we have to condition on random times and naturally we will be asking the same question as we asked in DTMC that is, is my CTMC is a satisfies the strong Markov property right. So, we in DTMC we also looked at when we condition on random times whether it still satisfy Markov property if it dis satisfy then we call it as a strong Markov property. So, we want to see similar thing holds here. So, for that first we are going to define what is a stopping time for a CTMC.
So, this definition is exactly same as that in DTMC. We just want to know that uh, if there exists a function f such that if I want to answer the question that my random variable t is going to be less than or equal to t, I only need to look at my random process up to time t, nothing beyond it. If this is going to happen, then we are going to call that time t as my stopping time. Now, let us say t n to be the instance of nth jump. See, I am using the terminology jump here. That means that at this time, my, my Markov chain is changing its state, right? Uh, it is uh, leaving its current state and going to something else. That is what I am calling it as jump. Now, let us say Tn is the instance at which my Markov chain is changing its state for the nth time. Is Tn a stopping time? Right, right. So, if I need to know whether my nth jump has happened till time before time t, you just look at your Markov chain till time t and see how many times it has changed the state and you can know this answer. So, you can always have such a function f here which will say yes or no. So, tn in here happens to be a, a stopping time. And uh, you can also see that. Uh, if you random time t happens to be just some uh, given t, then also it is a stopping time as uh, we did it in the uh, DTMC case. So, okay, now with this, we are just going to define our strong Markov property like uh, we did it in our DTMC, which is as follows. Okay, so what we are saying, you are just saying that, okay, if you have, if t is a stopping time, if you are given your, uh, you have observed all your CTMC till that time t, 
t is this uh, mark uh, is this uh, stopping time and then you are looking at your Markov chains taking the value stay, uh, i1 after t1 rounds and i2 after further t2 rounds like this if this is going to be like as if i start looking my Markov chain from the beginning it is as if i start my Markov chain from state 0 where it has taken state i0 and subsequently it has taken state uh, i1 at time t1 and uh, i n at time t1. It is just like at random time whenever it is happened I am just pushing it to the origin and then I am pretending as if I am looking my Markov chain from the origin. Okay. So, if you are going to condition on a Markov chain that is fine like uh, yeah, as long as that is going to be a stopping time with respect to that Markov chain it is good like you can pretend as if uh, you are starting from the beginning. Okay, fine. So, this is the definition of a strong Markov property we are going to assume. Now, you see that even though my uh, time is continuous, I am basically looking at discrete events, right. I am going to because I have focusing on my pure jump CTMC here, I am going to look at the events where my state is changing. So, these are like discrete events because the things are not happening instantaneously, they are happening at after some time uh, and this time is positive with probability 1. So, you are going to see kind of events that can be possibly indexed with discrete indices. So, for example, first transition, second transition, third transition, they could be happening at different ra random times, but still these events you are indexing by discrete numbers, right? Like 1, 2, 3 and they are all, uh, you can you can make a, a countable indices set. So, based on this, we are can out of my continuous time Markov chain, I can extract an underlying embedded chain. Okay, so let us see what is that. So, I am going to assume like T n, this sequence is what is my uh, nth jump, this is the sequence of jumps. Now, I have my continuous process x t, right. Now, this process I am going to sample at this sequence, this uh, random times. So, let us say now I am going to get or maybe let us define from this. I am now going to define x n to be x of t n and now I am going to look at this sequence x n and I am going to call this sequence as an t n is the no. Xt is your process, right? Continuous time Markov chain. It is just like uh, you uh, you set t equals to tn. Right, exactly. So you are, let's say, if you are going to, uh, if you are looking at your CTMC as a function of time, you let's say initially you started, let's say for for simplicity, you from state 0, let us say you are going to stay here till this point. Let me call that realization T1, which is the realization of my random variable T1. And after that, you have jumped. Uh, for let us time being, let us assume it is a counting 
process so you have taken a value of one here and after that you will make this some time here then go here maybe take a long time here and uh, then make uh, another jump and like this okay so these are all your samples uh, t2 and like this once you tell me these realizations i am going to sample this process and I am going to derive. Uh, so, in the counting process, it so happens that like uh, every time there is a triggered, we are always counting 1 and it is going 1, but it need not be always the counting process, right? It could be something else. For example, it is transiting to some arbitrary states. So, in that case, uh, this could be something like these are different, different states you are going to transit and that is captured by this jump process xn. So, this is a kind of an embedded discrete time process which is embedded in my continuous time Markov chain, right. So, this is what this is an embedded process and we are going to call it as a basically a jump chain here. Whether it is a DTMC, we will see that if we have a we have a chain now which is uh, discretely indexed, what are its properties and how this is looking at the properties of this jump process, we can say something about the properties of the CTMC is what we are going to study next. It's, uh, it's, it does not make an assumption like here in this particular case, like whatever, let us say if it is not right continuous, whatever, uh, whatever the value of your xt at time t1, you are just defining that to be xn. So, in this case, if it is right continuous, you have taken the jump whatever the new value after the jump it is happening. Otherwise, you would have just taken this value. So, be it if we want to define it like this. So, whatever that we are just going to call it as xn sequence, okay, okay, fine. So, next we are going to see that now I have a jump sequence here which is discretely indexed and let us say this is now defined on on the same state space, on state space. So, my initially state CTMC is defined on state space S, my jump chain is also defined on the same state space, okay. Now, let us say that on this, I want to define a transition probability here, okay. So, how can I do that possibly? Because, like say, here also, like what? I can ask the question, okay. Uh, initially, so now I have basically this chain xn, I can ask okay what is the probability that this chain takes value j given that it has started from a particular state, okay. That you can always ask this question right like what is the probability that uh, in one step it takes a party. So, suppose that is a on this state I could always ask like if i and j belong to my state space, I want to ask this question, okay, what is this probability? What is this probability? This probability could be simply let us say probability that my x1 equals to j q1 my x0 equals to i like we did it in the DTMC, okay. So, fine, but I am I'm not, I have not started with this, I have started with my CTMC for which I know P of t, right. What is P of t? Yeah, for every t, it is going to give you the matrix, right, for your uh, uh, original uh, CTMC. So, fine, how you are going to define it? in terms of my initial p of t. See like going from state x0 to x1, this is happening in how much time? According to my initial CTMC, t1 rounds, right. Now basically what I am basic asking this question is probability that x of t1 is equals to j given that x of 0 is i, right. Now, this was like an embedded process, but now I have written in terms of my 
continuous process. Now I can write using my PT, I could find out what is this probability, right? So, depending on how you are uh, distribution, what is the distribution of this T1 and uh, what is the corresponding values of matrix PT, you, could, you can go and compute this value. Okay, fine. 